there booktube welcome back to my channel and welcome to the seventh video in the series where i talk about previous man booker winners today we're talking about the 1974 co-winner the conservationist by nadine gordimer in 1974 this book shared the prize with holiday by stanley middleton which i'll talk about in my next video but today Nadine Gordimer's epic saga, The Conservationist, is set in South Africa. This is during the period of apartheid, so we have at its center a white businessman named Mering who has an administrative job, but he's decided to purchase a 400-acre farm in South Africa. He's hired a black herdsman named Jacobus to oversee the farm, but Mering is always thinking, can he trust an employee to take care of his interests at his own expense. The novel begins with three words, pale freckled eggs. And with this, we enter a scene where Mering is about to visit his farm, where he sees the children who are living on his farm playing with guinea fowl eggs that they've taken from the bushes on his property. And he starts to think about what is it that the children are taking and their parents, what are their parents also taking that belong to him? And so while he wants to chastise the children, he berates his employee Jacobus thinking about all the things that he has responsibility over and what he can't control. But within all of this, he also finds himself having responsibility over a situation that he certainly does not want to be responsible for. Because a black Bantu man has been killed and his body dumped on the farm and Mering is finding that he also has to take control and take ownership of a situation when the police don't want to help and the black workers are refusing to acknowledge any part that they might have had in this event. So Mering, even though he's the person who has put out the money for this farm, he's finding that number one, things don't want to be subdued to his control, but also that even while he thinks that he can establish control and ownership over the land, that the land refuses to be controlled. And indeed, the people who he's trying to displace and the people who he's trying to replace as the owner of this land, even in death, they claim it in a way that he can't. And so through this novel, we see the system of apartheid, we see its successes, we see its failings, we see the strained relationships between blacks and whites and the struggle over ownership of legacy and ownership of property. But we also see interactions between Europeans and other settlers. So in this book, we have interactions between Mering and other European landowners who are his neighbors but who want to take advantage of his generosity and want to take advantage of the similarities between their circumstances. We also see relationships that he has tried to establish with women and how envious they are of his position regardless of the sacrifices that he's made to get to this place. We also see interactions between Mering as a representative of the European colonial system and interactions with Indians who have also come to South Africa looking for opportunities. And through these relationships, we see the very interesting dynamics that probably led to the establishment of this social hierarchy, but also led to its eventual collapse. The story felt like a very important one to read and Mering as a representative of the failing colonial system and the people in his life and their refusal to submit to his control. However, while this felt like a very eye-opening read and a very important one to digest, it was very difficult to get through as a story. It's 267 pages where most of it is rendered in stream of consciousness narrative, where we exist purely in the mind of marrying. We get very sparse dialogue, very sparse interactions between him and the people around him. But for most of the time, we're reading about Mering's thoughts as he interjects not just what he sees and what he observes, but he plays previous conversations that he's had with other people kind of in a loop in his head. And so while he is bringing us to what he is seeing, he's also using that to project on previous conversations or previous interactions that he's had. And what he's come away from those conversations with are usually examples of the people in his life who he thinks should yield to him and what they have done that have angered him, what they have done to show that he is not in control. As an example, he returns often to interactions that he had with the woman that he was wooing. And in fact, she's the person that he asked to tour this farm with him when he was thinking about buying it. But her response, instead of being happy for him and happy about the opportunity he had to own this land, she kept saying to him what she would do if she had the money to purchase the farm. Kind of showing that she was envious of his position, but also showing that 
what he seemed to do and what his plans were weren't good enough and that really angered Mering. But it also gives us a clue about political relationships because Mering represents one country and the woman that he wants to see represents another. So it gives us a little bit more about the politics of the times and the way Britain and British rule was perceived by other European nations. Mering also frequently returns to conversations that he's had with his ex-wife and his son because his son as a teenager refuses to follow in his father's footsteps and indeed criticizes his father and the system that has provided for him and allowed him to have the education that has brought him to the place where he can now criticize. And so it's very interesting the way the colonial system failed because it wasn't just an attack from the outside, but through marrying, through Mering's life, through his experience, we also see how the system failed internally. And this, as an example, as an allegory, as a symbol of the politics of the time, was a very interesting read, but it was very difficult to navigate because the book isn't published with traditional formatting. And so even with conversation, conversation is introduced by these hyphens, but we're also not really told who the speakers are. We kind of have to intuit that based on the conversation. So sometimes for me, it felt like I had to repeatedly read a passage to try to understand what was going on because in the middle of a conversation that you thought was happening between two people, again, Merrin would return to a previous conversation and his takeaways from that conversation and how it was informing what was going on in front of him. So as a read, it was difficult to get through, but it was so worth it. And so in the end, I gave this a strong four star rating. This is a book that I read last year, or at least I tried to. I don't feel like I got much of what the story was when I read it last year, which is why I was very excited to return to it this year. And I feel like this is a book that I want to revisit, just not right now, not right now. We're gonna get through all the other Booker Prize winners before I start revisiting them again. The Conservationist by Nadine Gordon, but this was my introduction to this author and I look forward to reading more from her. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read other books by this author and what you would suggest that I read next. This is a Penguin publication and so at the back of the book, there is a list of other books that Nadine Gordon have published and I just don't know where to go from here. So if you have a recommendation, I'd love to hear that from you as well. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'll link the playlist down below where you can watch other videos in this series. I'm gonna be reading and reviewing all the Man Booker Prize winners this year. So at the end of the year, expect the playlist to have 52 videos. Right now it only has six, now seven. So thanks for watching this video. Let's talk in the comments and until next time, happy reading, bye.